What's up everybody? John Eric Poli here with My MMA News and today's guest will be making her professional boxing debut on December 11th at Fight Night from the Zembo Shrine in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. I'm pleased to be talking to Letitia Moll here today. She's very familiar with My MMA News. She's been around uh, the scene here a little bit, repping a My MMA News shirt here today. Letitia, thanks for being here. I really appreciate the time. Hey, thanks so much for having me on. I really appreciate the uh, local exposure for this event. Yeah, no problem at all. Of course, we're big with regional MMA here at My MMA News, and I'm excited to get into some regional stuff, too. I've been used to doing a lot of these with, like, UFC and Bellator fighters, so it's nice to be back doing some regional things here. And let's start with what's going on here, your professional boxing debut. Of course, uh, we've covered you several times in your amateur MMA days. What kind of led to this decision to go pro in boxing as opposed to keep going the MMA route? Yeah, so I definitely plan on partaking in all of the uh – you know, pro martial arts that I can kickboxing MMA. Uh, but the choice for me to go pro and boxing first, uh, it's just something that I've kind of been doing really well in this year. I had all of my boxing fights this year. I'm two and one as an amateur, which, you know, isn't a lot of boxing matches, but with my experience from the other, um, martial arts, I've been excelling really well in it. I feel like just, it, it's the right move for me. It feels right. I'm excited. And it's just for right now, something that is going to lead me into the, to the next step. So what's the, like the long-term goal, I guess, going here with all this? I know you said you kind of want to, you know, get into kickboxing and all that. Are you just going to kind of mix it up and keep, you know, competing in as many different uh, levels of martial arts as possible? Or do you kind of have like a long-term thing? Eventually you want to just focus on one skill set. I think for right now, especially starting out, I don't really have, you know, I, I don't have anything set in place. I'm not signed in any kind of contracts. I think right now for me, it's just building up that experience as a pro, uh, getting comfortable as a pro. I have no problem taking other fights. If it's something that I can work into my schedule. Um, it's definitely, you know, just kind of playing it by ear right now. If something does happen where, you know, I get offered a contract, you know, that's really good, you know, to fight just boxing or to fight just kickboxing. That's something I'm definitely going to think about and take into account at that time. But for right now, I'm kind of just open to whatever. So recently, I've done a few interviews. The one with the Bellator fighter, Cody Law. I just had uh, Adrian Giannis on from uh, the UFC. We were talking about boxing. They're big into boxing as well. And the big thing that they were saying was as much as they study it and they try to work on it, there are some things that are different because the striking in MMA as opposed to the striking in boxing is different. So obviously, there are some similarities, but there's a lot of differences in it. How hard was it for you kind of getting into this whole boxing scene here when you're used to training mixed martial arts and this being at a different distance than you would be in boxing? Right. So I actually started with um, the MMA kickboxing background, moved into boxing. I think it's easier to transition from MMA into boxing than it is to go from boxing to MMA because MMA, there's so much to know. There's so much to learn, you know, the wrestling, the jujitsu. It's a different type of striking for MMA as well. Uh, but uh, luckily, I just naturally had a good boxing form, a good boxing background. My striking um, is is mainly a kickboxing style, but to me, all I had to do was take those kicks away, tweak a few things um, for footwork, and I just, I picked up on it really well. And how have things been for you too over the last like year or so? Because the pandemic was a killer for so many people in different walks of life, but uh, MMA was obviously affected by it, especially on the regional scene of all places too, really took a hit with that, with gyms being closed, events were hardly being put on in that time. So. Over this last year or so, how did you kind of go about sharpening your skill sets and kind of working to this point when obviously the resources that you needed weren't always available? Yeah, uh, especially when the gyms were shut down, the, um, you know, the gyms like Crunch and, and Planet Fitness, even though they're not my main place to train, they were still something that were, you know, really helpful for training, for staying in shape, for running, for lifting weights. I did a lot of home workout stuff. Um, I bought one of those pull-up bars that go in your doorway. So I created all kinds of like home circuits. Uh, I would run outside in the snow. Like I was just doing whatever I could to stay in some sort of shape the best I could at my house. And I know that's what everyone else was doing too. And that's just the best we could do with it. And after your last MMA fight, actually, I know you posted a video recently on your Instagram that I watched. And I have to say, I absolutely loved that message that you gave. And I'll let you talk about that message here in a second. But, uh, you know, to, just to give everybody the background of it, you were coming off of, I believe, it was seven straight losses in your amateur MMA record. And you finally got a win there. And you were obviously very emotional in that moment. 
tell everybody what was going on there and kind of what, what you were going through at that time. Yeah, that was a huge win for me. Um, I won my very first MMA fight in 2016. And I had not won an MMA, MMA fight since then until this year when I won that title for Flex Fight Series. Uh, that was a really emotional win for me. And it wasn't even, you know, the fact that I got a TKO, which I still can't believe I ended that fight. You know, I would have been happy with just putting my best foot forward, getting, you know, a decision. Of course, that's never what a fighter wants to do. But with my background and what I was experiencing, you know, that was going to be me giving my best. So to end that fight against an opponent who had a, you know, a much better record than me, she was a little bigger than me. I know she came from a really good school. It meant a lot to me. It, it just kind of proved to myself that I'm so glad I didn't quit. I feel like a lot of people quit before that, right before they make it. And that was just kind of my, that, that push I needed, like, okay, it's time for me to go pro. Like I can do this. And uh, tell everybody too, just a little bit about like this whole mindset that you have. Cause I'm a big believer in right. That tough situations make stronger people. And this is the perfect example of it. Many people, right. Coming off of seven losses would say, you know what? This isn't for me. You know, I, I, I'm not that good. Look, I, I can't do this. I quit, whatever you, you're sticking with it. You get a huge win. You, you claim a championship in that fight. Now you're going pro in boxing. You had some amateur boxing fights. So what does that say about you as a person? and just how driven you are with the sport that you want to keep going right to the end with it. Yeah, I mean, and you hear people say it a lot, you know, it's not a loss, it's a lesson. And it really is. I mean, you know, losses suck, they hurt, but sometimes you need to learn how to lose before you can win. I think a problem, you know, the problem with a lot of people is they're so used to winning, the second they lose, they just want to quit because they don't know what it's like to go through that to recover from that. I already know what that's like. So if I have to experience that again, I know how to fix it. I know how to tweak it. Um, I've been working with a mental sports uh, therapy coach, and she's probably one of the main reasons that I've even been able to stay in the sport, but also to win in the sport. Um, so it's it's really mainly mindset for me. For me, it's like 90% mindset, 10% physical. Yeah, talk about that too a little bit too, because I've been seeing this more and more. Uh, actually, the first fighter that I ever heard bring it up, it was over the summertime. I interviewed Tisha, Tisha Torres and she brought that up too. She was working with the with the mental coach, and now I've been slowly seeing it more and more with the more interviews that I do with a lot of these fighters, where everybody's big into this mental side of it, and as it should be. Just talk about that. Just how important it is that fans realize and other fighters realize that the mental side of the sport is just as important as the physical part of it. Yeah, I mean, to me, it's it's more important than the physical part. You look and you see you see fighters that don't physically look like they should be fighting. They don't look like they could run a mile and survive, but they're some of the greatest fighters in the world. And to me, that's just because they have the mindset. They have the perfect mindset. They don't care how they look. They don't care what you think. They're focused on what they have to do to win. And that was my biggest thing for me. I was so focused on, oh my God, I need to win. I need to win. I need to do this putting all this pressure on myself when in reality, all that I really needed to do was just focus on what I can control, scoring points, throwing punches, and just, you know, giving my best, my best effort, putting my foot foot forward. Now that was my personal mental struggle. Everyone's different. Everyone struggles with different things, but um, regardless, some people think, Oh, I'm confident. You know, I've won all of my fights until you lose that fight, you'll find out that you probably are struggling, struggling with something mentally too. So I always suggest, even if, you know, you're the greatest fighter in the world, it's still really important to work with someone who can help you with that mental mindset. Now, do you feel you're in a spot in your career where, okay, so you got that big win that we just talked about before. And now you kind of got this whole mental thing going for you. You feel really comfortable there that you're, I guess you'd say in a way, re-motivated, right? Things just seem to be clicking now all of a sudden. Do you feel like you're in that part of your career now where things are just coming easier and you're just so happy and, you know, everything's a joy to go out and compete like this? Yeah, especially this entire year. So I've already fought six times this year and my pro debut will be fight number seven. So, you know, it, I really kept the ball rolling this year. The momentum built up. Um, it's It's been an eye-opening experience this year. I feel like I've performed better this year than I ever have all the other years. So to me, it's just that forward momentum, like, okay, it's time. You know, I've been doing this for almost six years. I really need to just make that jump. I know it's like, it is scary to be a professional athlete. You know, the, the record is going to be there forever, but there's more to me and there's more to life than a record. You know, I'm doing this because I enjoy it because I love it. And I just have like a newfound confidence about it. 
And when this is all said and done, where do you see yourself at the end of your career? I just, I hope I make it, you know, one time to like, I want my family to be able to watch me on TV instead of having to drive two hours to watch me fight. That would be cool. <laughs> but really at the end of it, I just, to me, it's, it's about, you know, having fun. Uh, I still want to keep learning. I just, I want to learn from, from everyone that I fight. I want to learn from other people. Uh, and of course, of being pro, I want to get paid. I'm not getting punched in the face for free anymore. So that's always nice. <laughs> Well, I can tell you one of your family members that will definitely be watching you on TV is your cousin, Mark. And actually funny, small world. I know we had this whole like little connection that we were talking about before we came on air about my MMA news and you doing some things with Eric in the past. But me and Mark actually go back to Lock Haven University. Me and Mark, we were actually friends and teammates. Mark was a lot better of an athlete than I was. Mark was a Division II All-American. I was the last guy on the roster. There's a completely different mindset there when it comes to uh, our athletic ability there. Um, but anyway, Mark now is a male model. Every time I see him, he's always posting a photo without a shirt on. And I know that you're big into nutrition and to fitness and everything. Do you guys ever kind of get together and have a little uh, conversation about nutrition or fitness? Does he help you out with anything like that? Uh, no, actually, surprisingly not. We did talk about meeting up and maybe like lifting. Um, just right now, it's that's something I can't do on, because I'm on a strict lifting program. But maybe after this fight, you know, we'll, we'll hook up. I'll have him put me through one of his uh, workouts. They look insane. And I know he's like a freak of an athlete. So I'd love to, to work with him sometime. Yeah, Mark is a great workout partner. I've gotten to work out, work out with him several times uh, through the years here. And uh, I'm so proud of Mark, too, seeing what he's done. When I ever see those photos, I always wish I could have a body like that. I know the hard work that he puts into it, the nutrition that goes into it. Uh, just talk about how proud you are of him, too, like I just did there, because Mark's really killing it with the modeling game, and I know he's going to do great things in the modeling career there. Yeah, it's crazy to see how much he's changed, um, especially, you know, growing up with him because I've known him my whole life. So he's always been this huge, you know, big guy and, and you know, strong, big as in strong. You know, he's, he's always been an athlete. Um, and it's just crazy to see, you know, this shift in like his physique, but it's also like his mindset. I know he does it because he loves it. It's not because he didn't like how he looked. This is just something he enjoys. It's something he's passionate about. And I love seeing people doing stuff that they're passionate about and seeing that pay off for them. Uh, it's, it's just really cool to see him chase his dreams. Definitely is. And it's been great watching you do what you've been doing there. Best of luck in your pro debut. Uh, before you roll out though here today, uh, why don't you tell everybody where they can find you out on social media? I know you have t-shirts, I believe, that you're currently giving away. I believe it's on your social media. Uh, if you have any sponsors you got to give a shout out to, coaches, friends, whoever, please feel free to do so. Floor is yours. All right. So uh, I am on Instagram. If you type in my name, Letitia Mole, or my username is Tisha Squisha. I'm on Facebook under uh, Letitia Mole, the Honey Badger. I do have uh, Honey Badger merchandise available for purchase. We have t-shirts, sweatshirts, tank tops, stickers. We have uh, beanies that we just released. Um, all of that can be found at my, uh, MMAT company, MMATCo.com. And I do have a lot of sponsors, so I will try to get them in all real quick for you. Uh, my sponsors for my pro debut, Long Shot Chameleons, Seals, Seals Incorporated, Royal Men's Styles, Mobile Medics, Maple Street Laundromat, Out in the Lights, uh, 717 Sports Hub, Evolution Krav Maga, Dittmar Propane, Great Sports Minds LLC, Kentucky Hemp Works, Eric Forberger Photography, Platinum Central PA, MMA Co. Uh, Fit Forever 365, who is also my head boxing coach at Capital Punishment Boxing Club. And we have the McShane firm, as well as Black Sheep Striking. And he is another one of my coaches, Jeff Knapp from Algeo MMA. And um, I think I got everybody. <laughs> all right, Letitia, I was quite the list of sponsors there, but uh, glad you got all of them in there. I'm sure they're very proud of you. And uh, best of luck to you at your upcoming fight on December 11th. So make sure you guys... Check out her pro boxing debut. Make sure you guys are also checking out MyMMAnews.com. Great content that comes out there, not only from things like the UFC and the bigger promotions, but a lot of regional stuff just like this comes out at MyMMAnews on a pretty regular basis, so make sure you guys are checking that out. If you like today's interview, please go to the bottom. Make sure you give it a thumbs up. Also, don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel if you haven't done so already. And if you want to find me on Instagram or Twitter, I'm at John Arapoli. We'll see you later, everybody.